Okay. Hey, welcome back, guys, to the Student Pages podcast. I'm Finlay. I'm joined by Louisa Tronka. How are you, how are you Louisa? I'm well. Have you ever been to the UK? <laughs> no, but I really want to. I haven't traveled much, to be quite honest. Like, I feel like I've been such a workaholic all my life that if work doesn't bring me somewhere, um, I have I haven't really gone except for the Philippines, I guess. Um, that that has been a personal um, holiday. Um, <laughs> holiday. I understood um, it that time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. You've had quite a unique, um, like, childhood and adolescence as well. Kind of always been always performing. Like you performed your first kind of performing thing you did was when you were eight, right? Uh, yeah, that was one of the first, I think the very first one was when I was seven. Um, and that was with the Royal Winnipeg Ballet for the Nutcracker. Um, and that was a really funny story because, uh, my mom was the one who saw that ad in the newspaper. And, uh, I think I took like one ballet, I swear, I took like one ballet class when I was like four and my mom had this great idea of like taking me to this audition and put me in I think it was like like black dress pants and like a long sleeve shirt and my hair was down and I go to the audition and all the girls were in like buns tights um body suits and I stuck out like a sore thumb and uh I, I was kind of like mom I'm, what am I doing here and she's like, oh, so you would just, you know, like, they, they're having a production, like, like this winter break. Um, and, it, you know, you like to dance around the house. So I just thought maybe we'll just like, we'll just see if y you like this. And I was like, okay. And I ended up getting in somehow. Um, I think I just, I don't know what happened, but something happened and they accepted me. Um, and I played a mouse. Oh, no. so, <laughs> I played a mouse. I wore like a little mouse suit um, and like huge ears. And yeah, so I guess it did start from a young age, but it was never um, like I never was in the film industry. I was always in theater growing up. Um, mm -hmm. And and it was always like from a place, I think, from from having fun. Like it would always be like theater productions during like the summer winter break. And it almost felt like summer camp where I got to like meet new people and like be around the same like 20 people every day. And we would be best friends. And then summer would be over and then we were like, okay, I guess it's just back to our regular lives and we'll never see each other again. Um, yeah, that was most of my childhood, I would say. <laughs> and then since, since, um, that kind of love of performance developed, it's kind of turned into this like uh, like work obsession or? I think so. I, I think it comes from, because the thing is, is like, I, I didn't really, like I never, I was never like a childhood, I would never like describe myself as a childhood actor to be quite honest, because I never stepped foot on a like a, um, like I stepped foot on like, a, you know, student films and, and stuff like that, but it wasn't, like, from a, like, professional standpoint, I think, and it, I think it just stemmed from, like, I would, I would be, like, in AP classes in high school, and I would have, I would be part of, like, the dance troupe in high school, so we would have, um, like, classes in the morning, like, dance from, like, 7.30 in the morning till, 8 30 8 45 and then I would get ready and go to school and then after school I would go to like musical theater classes after and then have dinner and then I would do my homework and then repeat and then I would also work part-time jobs during the weekend so right. wow. I think it was just like I don't know what like I don't know what what was going on with me like it just kept like it slowly started from like two classes a week of like in the arts and then it became like five and then plus like the like part-time job. So I think it was just this constant thing of like, I was always, always, always going. And um, it just kind of trickled through out my entire life, I think. What's the hardest you've ever worked for a role? Um, like in terms of auditioning or in terms of like when I, when I got it? Um, those are two different things. Yeah, one and then the other. Hmm. 
I think it, for every audition, I do actually put a lot of work into it. Um, no matter like what it is, if I'm, if I'm excited about it, I'll definitely put in the work. Um, in terms of like booking a role, I, I think, I think probably the order to be quite honest. Um, just because like, well, and make it pop because they're both like t TV series. Um, it kind of feels like you're running a marathon whenever you're filming a TV series. Like you're going on for months and months and months and you're kind of mm. tired the entire time and you're just trying to like keep up your stamina. Um, so yeah, I would probably, I would probably say the order. What does that, what does that consist of getting kind of getting ready for an audition? Cause presumably some people, um, like if they're not as experienced or they don't care as much, they'll just go in sort of blind with the script. Or is, do you mean like you, you sort of like you learn the script, maybe you show up like in a costume or what, what does that consist of for you? Um, I think it, it depends for like, it, it varies on every actor, but for me, I try to, you know, give an example of what I would bring to the table if they would hire me. So whatever that means. So I, I do think about, you know, the physicality of a character and that will include what they wear. Like, exa like from what I wear, if it's like, if I'm wearing a suit, it's going to make me stand different. If it's, if I'm wearing sweats, it's going to make me stand different. If I'm standing in heels, it's going to make me stand different. So and I think gosh, and it's also like fun. Like, I don't know, like, I feel like creating the character is like part of the fun. So for me, it's not so much work. It's like, it's just creation. Mm. Um, so that, and then I always, and then I always try to be as off book as I can um, because I feel like from, and every actor is different, but for me, I feel like if I have sides in my hand, it kind of uh, gives me like, a, I don't know, a crutch almost. Um, so I try to be off book as much as I can so I can like freely live as a character. Um, and give and then show them sort of like what I would bring if they were to hire me. Mm. Yeah, for the audition for Make It Pop was was not like a kind of normal audition. It was days of just like being up and dancing and just crazy fun, basically. Yeah, it was really intense. It was um, actually they did a worldwide search for these uh, three characters. So I remember, oh man, this is such a crazy story. So I rem I remember auditioning for it I self-taped it for um Megan Lee's role Sun He and uh self-taped that and then I think it was maybe like a week later they were like oh we want you to we have a callback but it's going to be for this role Jody um which I ended up uh getting of course but uh after they sent that I was like okay great um didn't hear for six months. Didn't even film the callback. Didn't even have the callback. Didn't hear anything for six months. And I was kind of like, okay, um, kind of went about, you know, different work and stuff like that. And then six months later, um, they called and they had, uh, they had callbacks in Toronto. Um, and at that time, uh, the same, the same week, it fell on this week where my mom and I had booked a holiday together. Yeah. Um, and I hadn't booked, um, booked one in like three years. So we booked this trip to New York and it was for my birthday. And I was kind of like at a place of like, you know what? No, like I, I want to live my life and I want to, you know, it's always been about work and I just kind of want this, like this thing for myself. And my parents were the ones who were like, I don't know. It sounds like it, it might be, um, like it might be aligned for that reason. Like it might be aligned that it's on your birthday for a reason. Um, so my mom was like, you should go. And I went, but my trip. And she said, <laughs> you should go and we'll go after. So what ended up happening was my mom met me in Toronto instead of New York. And I did the, I did the callback and yeah, it was like, um, there were still a lot of girls that call back and there's a, and there's a lot of, it was like full day. Like it was like a theater audition. It's basically like an open call theater audition. It felt like it was like you had to do, you had to sing, you had to dance and you had to act. And it was exhausting. Um, and we had to do that all over again for another, for another callback for a chemistry read. Cause that's when they brought everybody 
together and started matching people to see who would fit for what. Um, but yeah, so good thing I booked it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's crazy yeah. that you, you had to cancel your holiday just for something that you didn't, you didn't even know if you'd get, but I guess it turned out really well. Yeah. We, like I had, I, I was, I was literally, I, and sometimes I wonder of like, it's one of those moments of like, what would have happened if I went about the other way? Like if I didn't go, yeah. um, and I could have been like, Oh, I'll just tape it or, you know what I mean? Um, but I, I don't know. It was a unique experience and I feel like, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think you, maybe you wouldn't, you might not have even, you might not have enjoyed the, the vacation if you were thinking the whole time, like, <laughs> Oh no, but I could have gone to that audition and I could have, I could have made it pop, you know? Yeah, may maybe, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's like, thanks to my parents who are the ones that pushed me to do it. But I was like, I was definitely in a place of like, no, like, <laughs> feel like I always do this to myself and there we go. So it actually worked. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, um, with, with the order, something I've always wondered is when, when two people have to pretend that they're like in a thing on a show, does that ever get awkward? You know what I mean? Like you squinted. A bit like there. in a relationship? Like in a relationship, okay, yeah, yeah. On a show. Does that get awkward kind of when you're not filming? Um, I don't think so. I mean, is it? I just always figured like that would be awkward if you've got a, I don't know if you've got an act all kind of uh, lovey with someone on, on, on set and then is that is there no like tension there afterwards i don't i don't think so i mean i i will say like if if it's someone that you probably just met that day absolutely but mm. for for like for example i guess for like the first season for the order um my character <laughs> drunkenly made out with um someone at a party and licked his face and that was somebody who I just met that day and so that was a little um strange um because it's just like hey I'm Marisa hey um yeah ready to ready to do this <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice to meet you um so that I would say is a little a little strange but it's just one of those things we're like Kate hey, we're just gonna we're just gonna do this um and but for for something like with me and uh adam like for randall his character i don't know i've known adam for a while like we did this other movie called zapped um together and so we're like we're friends and so it's just like like yesterday he was sending me um videos that fans clipped together of us um, <laughs> like shipping us i'm like yes we made it um, <laughs> <laughs> we did it um so that that's like completely chill yeah i don't know I, I guess it's theater people and like sort of acting people in general i get the impression that you guys are so kind of open and and uh it's kind of sort of i don't know touch your friends i mean i think <laughs> people are so emotionally confused that you know <laughs> I'm sort of like please don't touch me i don't want to get close to you in any way that's probably why I asked that question. It probably says a lot more about me. I don't know. No, I, I, I think so. Like it's, I think it's probably still weird for like my boyfriend to watch me kiss somebody else on screen. Like, right. you know, like I feel like it, it's a weird thing that we do. Like it's, it, it is like to be like intimate because essentially you're being intimate with somebody and vulnerable with somebody. Um, but I feel like, it, I feel I, this might be part of my messed up actor way of thinking. I feel protected by a script, wow. um, by a character. Because even like when I watch The Order now, like sometimes I just, I forget that it's me. Yeah, it's just basically kind of messed up with what we, <laughs> what we do of like opening ourselves intimately to, to people who aren't <laughs> like my partner. Yeah. Um, but yeah, again, I feel like I'm protected by the script and the story like and when I watch myself oh that's what I was saying when I watch myself on the order sometimes I forget that it's me I and I'm not and I'm not kidding when I say that like I'm like oh Gabrielle's like making out with someone again woo or like Gabrielle is being you know a bitch again woo and I'm like oh right that was me I feel 
I literally filmed that two years ago or whatever, a year ago. Um, but yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, that's interesting. I always wondered about that. Always, always wondered. Um, <laughs> and uh, I wanted to ask you about, yeah, uh, working on, on, on Recess mm-hmm. after um, kind of growing up watching it. Um, how was that? Did you feel a lot of pressure to kind of kind of live up to to live up to recess to make it as good as the the, the series or uh I, I honestly I don't know if it came so much about um feeling a lot of pressure but I felt really excited right um so it was actually like it was um Adam DeMarco was the one who um suggested me to play Spinelli um because Jerome uh, the director and uh, one of the writers, he, I guess they were trying to figure out who was going to play Spinelli and Adam was like, I feel like Larissa would be, would be good at this. And so um, it was like basically like a bunch of friends essentially getting together and we were like, this is pretty badass and let's just like have fun doing it. Um, yeah, we shot it over two days. I think it was like, it was two, a weekend. And we just, we just did it together. So yeah, it came from a place of being really excited about it rather than being pressured, I think. Sweet, that's so cool. And I'm, I'm, I'm wary of the fact this, this, this has actually flown by. This felt so quick. Kind of hef- heavy lockdown where you are at the moment? Or is it? Um, it's getting better, actually. Vancouver is like, like everyone is out and about basically now. Oh, okay. Because I was going to yeah. ask you, like, what's the first thing you'll do once lockdown like lifts completely? Oh, go out dancing. Oh, okay, nice. Well, like, like, hit yeah. up the club? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I miss going out and dancing um, with my friends. What's, what's, what does the future look like for you? What are you excited to do once everything gets going again? Oh, gosh. I feel like we're just, like, everyone's just living in, in this time where nobody knows what's, gonna, what's going on. Um... Are you asking me what it looks like? Or are you asking me what I would like it to look like? Yeah, what, what would you like it? What would you, what would you hope um, the future brings? Um, well, I feel like everybody is obviously aware of like what's been happening with COVID and the Black Lives Matter movement. And as much as it's like, honestly, like, every day I feel like it's, it varies for me on an emotional level. (laughs) Like, some days I'm feeling really good, and then some days I'm feeling really down, and I don't want to see anybody. Um, But I feel like, I I feel like it's all gonna be for something better in the long run. Like, I feel like we're living in a time where history is being made, and I feel like hopefully, you know, for me anyway, I know like I'm going to be much more grateful when I'm able to just like get on a plane and see my parents. Um, cause I haven't seen them since Christmas and I was planning to see them earlier in the spring and then obviously with the pandemic and, and, and now I, I feel like I, I can come see, go see them. I might go see them next month, but it's always been this weird thing because they're at an age, like at risk age. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, like, obviously the industry has taken steps towards, um, inclusivity and diversity. I feel like there's obviously much, much more work to be done. And I'm hoping I can be a part of that, um, sort of movement because I am a part of the Filipino culture and I've yet to see, you know, um, the people who look like me sort of be in the spotlight of a a series or a movie. Um, So I think that's kind of like what, for me, what I'm wanting. Um, I think it would be really cool to be part of like a movie trilogy, like something like the Hunger Games has always been something like I've been wanting to do. Um, So yeah, that's, that's kind of like my hopes and dreams. Love that. I love, I love how you answered that question. That was brilliant. That's such a good note to end on. Thanks so much for um, having this little chat with me that flew by. Um, yeah, loved it. And thanks so much for um, 
listening to the student slash watching student pages podcast thanks so much and uh yeah see you guys next time